starters all year for Seton Hall. That's meant the triumvirate of Kadari Richmond, Alamir Dawes, and Dre Davis. Mill Telford and Pierre Brooks have been the leading scorers most of the year, along with DJ Davis for Butler. Significant game on a Saturday night in Newark, New Jersey. We are underway between Seton Hall and Butler. Ryan O'Connell, Brent Hampton, Mike Pelot are the referees tonight. Dawes feeding Richmond, top of the key. Richmond splitting the double. Tough look as he tried to take it in himself. Jalen Thomas knocked it free. And not surprising. First possession of the game for the Pirates. Shaheen Holloway trying to get downhill action with Richmond, middle of the floor. I love how uh, Shaheen Holloway has described Big East play this year. It's like every game is World War III. Those were his <laughs> words earlier. It's It's been a physical year and a tremendous year of competition. Three for the corner, short by Davis. Second chance for the Bulldogs, also short for three. Yeah, no one in position for an offensive board that time. Heads up cross-court skip. The shot selection is going to be key for the Bulldogs early. Davis, nice pass underneath to get the scoring started. Jalen Bediaco, today is his 100th career game, his 50th at Seton Hall. They'll take hot perimeter shooting, and they will score in bunches. There's a takeaway by Davis. Dre Davis ignites the crowd. But this is how the Pirates do their damage. Defense into offense, dribble penetration, and high percentage paint touches. Bosh Alexander, who of course is no stranger to the area, grew up here, played at St. John's. Davis, extra pass Alexander around the horn. It's Pierre Brooks. That was halfway down. Michigan State transfer who's led Butler in scoring all year, though he has been quiet lately. Three off the mark from the corner. The pace of this game will be interesting to see. Seton Hall can play at whatever tempo they give you. They're, just, they're a high-effort team. Oh, big block right off the hop. Betty Yako says hello. We talked to Fab Mata before the game. He talked about how they are so unselfish, the Pirates, when they put it on the deck. And their length and athleticism defensively can affect this one. Last meeting, Bediaco at five blocks against Butler, tied for the most in his career. So far, the seal has not been broken for Butler. They need to outscore their woes. Dylan Adewuzu way off. Tough shot. Bosh Alexander the rebound. And you know, the Pirates, Alex, will control tempo the longer this game goes on. Alexander with a trade to uh, start the scoring for Butler. But listen, Shaheen Holloway is a former player. Yep. He sees the place packed tonight. He sees the place juice. He's going to let his guys go up and down, get the cobwebs out, get the butterflies out, let a few fly that will not fly in well, the second half. I, I think that's what we were both kind of determining. Seton Hall may not be the most aesthetically pleasing sometimes, but you cannot question their motor. Oh. Davis off the mark. Matchup of Davis and Telford is going to be fascinating this evening. I was going to say, yeah, for, for Butler, how many touches will Telford get? Lost three in a row. Two and four in the month of February. Here is Telford. Corner three. Short. And off the top of the back there. I'll tell you, several haven't been dropping, but the ball reversals and ball movements been nice early. Bad Mata. He says from the beginning of the year, really, the guys have stayed loose in the locker room, even with some highs and lows. This is their second three-game losing streak this year. Picked up some key wins earlier in the year, but they really haven't let that affect their level get too high or too low. Well, and, and it's easy to say great things about your guys when you're overachieving in preseason pick ninth. But when we talked to them in October, I think these media they said there was something special with this group. So when they're at dinner, they don't look at their phones. What, they what actually, a concept! <laughs> eye contact, co conversation. Actual conversation, but he can tell that the off the court. Camaraderie, camaraderie was there early and the way these guys bonded in the preseason and he thinks with you know with tough losses and some adversity it's carried over Shaheen Holloway meanwhile interesting talking to him yesterday he feels the team is going through some bumps and bruises but yeah, I, I asked him if, if the best attribute of his team is their toughness and he seemed to agree with that 
and opposing Big East coaching staffs agree with that as well. For sure. I mean, when you go against the Pirates, you, you are in for it for 40 minutes. Ball pressure, physicality, help side defense. Relentless. Exactly. Foul from Davis. Gets the takeaway. Alamir Dawes scores. Alexander, another line ball turnover. Richmond on the take to lay it in. And a couple of costly errors for Butler in the early going. Josh Alexander needs to settle his ball club down right now. Run your stuff. Be patient, but be strong with the basketball. Brooks launches from three. Tap out, goes to the Pirates. Dawes crossover into the lane, pull up, no. Telford the rebound. And for Butler, who scratched and clawed, they've had one of the toughest schedules in the country, trying to end a tournament drought, stretching back 2018. Another live ball turnover. What a crossover. Ade Wuzu then threw it right to the waiting hands of Telford. Otherwise, oh, that could have been another easy two. Boy, Butler, they look a little scattershot with these turnovers. Yeah. Well, that's going to be the topic of conversation for Todd Mata during this first media timeout. P3 way off from DJ Davis, the UC Irvine transfer. He struggled for the field the last few games. 0 for 6 from 3 against Villanova in the last game. Just 4 points. Double comes out to meet Richmond. And he pass Betty Yako. Tried to finish through the contact. He'll head to the line. How about that vision from Kadari Richmond? And in his place, <laughs> he's rocking. But it's been a Six Seton Hall points off those turnovers to begin the game. Butler doesn't turn the ball over much, averaging about ten and a half per game. Almost halfway to that total already as Betty Ako is at the stripe here. Betty Ako mentioned his hundredth career game Sunday snapped a 13-game streak of double-figure scoring, the longest of his career. But besides the turnovers, I thought that they also lived on the perimeter. You didn't see the ball penetrate into the mid-range area, inside the three-point arc. Look for them to get some pick and roll and staggered screen misdirection action going. Really have been lacking a dominant low post presence all year. As they enter it to Andre's screen. Oh, Betty Yako again is there for the block. Isn't that a big-time deflection? I don't know. They all immediately just ran back on defense. Never yeah. even argued it. No. That was about as clean as it gets. Pat Mata is uh, having a discussion right now <laughs> with the official. Did Maybe we miss something? <laughs> Dawes. And he gets a shooter's roll. Maybe if all five just automatically run back. The I refs guess. Just I don't know. <laughs> they just gave up on the possession. That was. Wow. 8 0 run for Seton Hall. Well, away from the ball here. Great Davis picks up the foul. Other one for ten from the field to begin the game. They're coming off a 72-62 loss to Villanova on Tuesday. They got out-rebounded by 17 to show how much that size differential has been an issue. Telford at 6 7, trying to lower his shoulder and back in. Alexander driving. Finley Bizjack, first touch, stepped out. Fifth I like, turnover. I like the move of Mata going with Bizjack here because he's somebody that's had some terrific shooting stretches, the freshman for Butler, when they're cold at times, uh, an option out there that could stretch the D with his three point touch. Mid February, he had a real breakout game 19 points against Marquette. Need a spark of some kind. Davis turns the corner baseline. Guarded by Landon, or rather, Trey Davis gets to the rim. He was guarded by Landon Moore the whole way. Still scores. You know, for how brilliant could Ari Richmond and Alamir Dawes has been this year for Shaheen Holloway, he 
stresses the fact that Dre Davis has been Mr. Consistency. Or look like he got hit. No call. Rebound for Dawes. Look out. Up a Wuzu on the try. Davis the rebound and the put back to clean it up. And that's hustle points. And the Pirates are out running. And this crowd loves it. At that amount, it just picked up together at fast. Yeah. You know, because other than Bizjack, you're talking all veterans on the floor on both sides. Yep. This is a veteran ball game right now. Bizjack. Nice. In the corner, extra pass, Alexander. And he knocks down a three. Now, you got to be aware of this because Pasha's overall career three point shooting numbers are not going to blow you away, but he has stretches to where he gets streaky in a good way. He loves playing back home here in New York or in the New York area. His pass knocked away. Davis tried to feed Adewuzu on the back cut. Low block. Davis tried to turn the corner, got hit. You know what? Play on. Both ends, we've seen that already. Telford goes in. Davis comes back to defend. Well, when you catch yourself down 13 early, of course, you know, the bracketologists that, <laughs> you know, that are able to figure this thing out and, and, it, and, and break all of this down. But at the end of the day, whenever they interview the committee afterwards, you always hear... Who did you beat and where did you beat them? So Thad Mott and these Bulldogs know that a win here tonight is big time for the resume. Now Landon Moore just threw that away. Ray Davis on the step through to finish. And you just heard Thad Mata yep. complimenting the ball club on doing a better job taking care of the Rock. The second stanza and talking to his bigs about shot faking inside. These guys are juiced up. They're going for blocks. And you could slow yourself down and get to the free throw line a little bit. Jalen Thomas, first touch of the game. Alexander way off from three. There's Isaiah Coleman. Really good freshman. Great addition to this Seton Hall team. Richmond takes it inside, met with resistance from Thomas. He looks better and better every month. Telford, shot fake. Alexander, spot up for, from three. And Alexander, you talking about it, Vin. He just, he just can get hot. He makes one early. His shooting percentage numbers really go out the window. Alexander three for four from the field. The rest of the team is still yet to hit a basket. This is an offensive foul. Moving screen. This one wasn't out of the flow of the rhythm at all. Mediaco, the big guy, was out there on posh. I thought he was going to try to isolate and take the big off the dribble. That time felt like he had enough daylight. So far, Posh has had to carry the load. We haven't really called Telford's name much. Here he is. Played all 40 minutes against Villanova. The other night. Bounce pass goes awry. Alexander threw it right to a pirate. And he'll get back and defend, try to poke it away from Dawes. Alexander saying, my bad on the pass that went away. Seventh turnover. This is unlike this veteran Butler team that we've seen when they've had stretches of playing well. The way they are turning the rock over. Seton Hall with 10 of their 18 points coming off turnovers from Butler. Oh, that pass off the back of Alexander's head. Oh, my. Winds up with Coleman. He bumps and bruises everywhere. Just took the headband off. Yeah. Dawes off the crossover, fall away three, too strong. Tapped out of bounds, goes back to Butler. I said he, he could be a tough shot maker, but that was a high degree of difficulty. Looks <laughs> like those line drives that hit the pitchers <laughs> down right up the middle. Exactly. 
Andre Screen fouled out against Villanova last time out. Well, this pass floated in the region of Alexander in the corner. Everything being forced for Butler right now. By the way, how great of a last name is Screen? Yes. <laughs> for a big guy, <laughs> too. A big guy in hoops. <laughs> and it's not like dunk or shot. No, it, yeah. it, it's unselfish play. Going to Screen for a teammate. Well, Screen didn't need one there to rattle one hole. You know what, that model will take this with his leading score, Brooks, to get himself going. On the take, Dawes, no. Here, Brooks wants the ball in the corner. Telford driving, scoring. His first two and a 7 0 run for Butler. Right back in it. And if he's not operating in a strong way along the baseline, that's when Telford is at his best. On the corner, Coleman. No. A rebound right to the waiting hands of DJ Davis. Alexander, senior on this team. Whoa, where was that pass going? He has been off kilter from the get go. You have to be fundamental. You got to be aggressive. You got to be strong with the basketball, but you also have to be locked in as a group when you go against this pirate defense in the half court. Shaheen Holloway really has these guys connected defensively. Coleman, Arade Wusu. Stuffed the stat sheet his last time out Sunday against St. John's. Davis a three. And three Davis who scored in double figures in 21 of 26 games. Hits a tray to extend the Seton Hall lead. And it's just brilliant offense. Started with a day Wusu, that dribble penetration. He sucked multiple gray jerseys in and it opened it up for Davis on the perimeter. Delford off the touch pass, swings it back to Alexander. Does he have the hot hand tonight? This one gets punched back out to Telford. Brooks lines up a three. He's off the mark. Rebound, Dre Davis. And a foul against the Bulldogs. Now Butler struggling with turnover. Arquette and UConn with either of these clubs, let's nope. be honest. So nope. when you're talking about trying to get yourself on the 11 seed line, this next week and a half, the Big East tournament, this all plays into the final formula and ingredients that this committee looks at So uh, If you can avoid playing on that first day, heaven forbid there's a mishap of any kind. That's why they want to remain fifth or better in the Big East standings. Yep. After you have that big three, you got the Pirates right after that. Yeah, and it's Richmond. And that's really Kadarin's bread and butter right there. He almost lulls you to sleep, and then he gets himself into the pain. And then the way he can operate with both hands is just remarkable. All coming off a big win over St. John's. Huge comeback. Came back from down 19. That could have been a travel. No call. DJ Davis, nice pass inside. That bounce pass with some ferocity to Jalen Thomas. That's great offensive action that they have out of their half court stuff. And Thomas always has the ability to face up or put on the brakes with soft touch at the end. Elijah Hutchins Everett missed some time with a concussion earlier this year. Great entry pass, Ade Wuzu. And it's Dre Davis on the fine. When they raise that many guys outside the arc, you have to be ready for cutters. Ten-point lead for Seton Hall. By as much as 13 in the first half. D.J. Davis, short from three. Outside of Posh Alexander, nothing much happening from the perimeter for Butler. The rest of the team, 0 for 13. Not a lot of cohesiveness. Over 10, that's it. Out of the Bulldogs' offense, it seems like there's six white jerseys out there on defense playing against them. They're crowded, the spacing's not there. Are they Wuzu offense 
takes it foul. Just one too many lunges with that shoulder and knocked down Davis. And Kadari's great at not picking up his dribble when he gets into situations like this. One to two dribbles gets from the arc to the front of the rim and Ray Wusu is one of those pirates that moves so well without the basketball. Oh, now he could also put you in a stretcher as yes. you saw when he's yes. backing you in. Yes. It's got that NFL frame. Yeah. I mean, listen, kudos to anyone that takes a charge on him. He's got some girth. 6'4", 215 on Ray Moore got Davis up in the air. And there's Brooks to knock down a three. He could do that. In bunches. And you see these Bulldogs and Thad Mata trying to keep that energy cooking on the sidelines way within shouting distance Brooks is scoring punches trailed off a little bit lately mid-range it's Richmond Dances. he makes mid-range look easy now Holloway said earlier this year he can be such a tease at times he just wanted to see what he called a six and one be in a place to have six good days, maybe one bad day. <laughs> Meanwhile, a couple of threes finally falling for Butler. Jalen Thomas getting it on the act. And it's down to six. Shaheen Holloway, he's got two bodies at the table ready to come in, but upset with that one because there wasn't a white jersey anywhere near Thomas on the perimeter. What is uneven as the start was for Butler. They have not let this get out of hand. Richmond off the screen. Richmond came up short, got his home miss, and cleaned it up. Butler bench arguing that Richmond traveled. They're trying to say caught his own yeah. pass. Glenn Hampton telling Thad Mata that was a shot attempt and a rebound. Here's DJ Davis, Ooh. and it's three straight triples for the Bulldogs. And you blindly watch and you think that the Pirates would be up by double digits the way they've seemingly outplayed the Bulldogs. And because of the three-point shot, you got yourself a five-point ball game. Uh, you know the difference? They clean up the turnovers. Josh yep. Alexander with four early ones. He's sitting for Butler right now. Shot clock. Timer down to six for Richmond. Crossover feeding Adewusu. He can shoot it from there. Skips it off the rim. Davis from way beyond the NBA line. Get ambitious. Richmond, all isolation with Telford. Ooh, perfect. DJ Davis is another one for Thad Mata that could get streaky in a good way as the third leading scorer, but. 153 of his 270 shot attempts are from deep. So, at Awuso, whoever's matched up, I mean, he will let it fly from deep in the half court or transition. Well, it's Telford. Just two points in the early going for him. Skip pass more from the corner. And Butler, after their tough start from behind the arc, all of a sudden they've come alive from deep. And it's a four point game. Off their seventh tray. Now the deficit is down to four with under two and a half to play in the first half. Meanwhile, the Pirates have one for six from downtown. We know that's not their bread and butter. They're going to have to earn it here offensively in the half court. Now this is a team that's dead last in the Big East in three point shooting. They make their living in the uh, painted area. Foul called against the Bulldogs. On Davis. Second foul for DJ Davis. And he will check out. Spot up three. Dawes right out of the inbound. Left him up mark. Is a hand that can get hot in a hurry. 19 on Sunday to lead the Pirates over St. John. There's some contact from Alamir Dawes. 
And he's one of the best volume three-point shooters in the Big East when he gets going. That's really the best term to describe it, Alex, is volume. And listen, baseline out of bounds underneath, you'll take it, but... Look out mm. here. Brooks short from three. That looks like the, their attempts early. Yeah. That wasn't out of the flow of their offense. Here we go. Well, here's Dawes again. I mean, his confidence is at a high, high level anyway. But when he makes one or two, I mean, you got to be ready. Telford, ball fake. And there's a three from Brooks Danson. Butler a little bit out of character with the way that they've <laughs> relied on the three-point ball, but it's kept them in the game. Under a minute to go in the half. Juan Sanders enters the game for Seton Hall. Richmond shot fake once, twice. He'll feed the sophomore. Sanders off the mark. Battle for the loose ball. Rebound winds up with Landon Moore. Or a sophomore transfer from St. Francis, PA. Electing not to go two for one. And a block the third of the game for Pediaco. This will stay with the Bulldogs. Coming up, Jeep Halftime Report. Mike Hill, Casey Jacobson, LaFonso Ellis in Los Angeles. Highlights from around the country. Huge game in the SEC. Alabama visiting Kentucky. Number two, Houston taking on number 11, Baylor. And then... What could impact both of these teams, Wake Forest upsetting Duke earlier today. Out of the inbound, Bizjet. Ten to shoot. It's back to Moore. Shovel pass, Thomas. And he lays it in. And now they're so concerned about the three-point shooting. Yeah. They're running the chase guys off the line. And it's penetration and dump offs that are hurting them. Shot clock turned off. Crowd rises, and with a couple fouls to give, but they're elected to grab Kadari Richmond. No continuation granted there. And if there's one guy on the floor that you could picture making that shot, it's Kadari yeah, Richmond. Yes, yeah, probably. <laughs> the way he's, he so easily makes trick shots go in. But for him, they're high percentage looks. Bulldog still with a foul to give. So, I'll sub out Telford, who picked up his second there. Betty Ocko for Richmond this time. Yeah. It is a three-point attempt. Oh, Brian oh. O'Connell's going to overrule him and oh, say it's on the floor. And he's going to hear it from this New Jersey crowd. Wow. I'm just surprised. Because Brent Hampton was so adamant and confident on that call that O'Connell overruled him like that. He's going over to explain it to Shaheen Holloway. Let's take a look. Here it comes. Here comes Kadari off. Uh, you know what? It's a lot closer on the floor when you look at there. Yeah. The chop from the back. He's still dribbling. Yeah. 3.6, quick inbound on Wuzu. He'll drive, and he'll try to go high off the glass. The tip came after the buzzer. Now, that being said, Brian O'Connor's going to have a tough walk to the locker room right now. Maybe from both head coaches <laughs> and the fans. The stripes are probably not their season hinging. Yeah, and when you get to this time of the year with the two bubble teams, you, you put yourself in their shoes. If you're Butler, you have an unbelievable opportunity here on the road if you're Thad Mata. But if you're Shaheen Holloway, you're saying, we have to take care of business at home here. Because who do the Pirates play next in their next two games? Creighton and UConn. And then they'll finish with Villanova. <laughs> if it gets any easier. Yeah, I was going to say, that those are not exactly three W's you pencil in. We're underway in the second half. E.J. Davis, timer inside of six. Bounce pass. Jalen Thomas couldn't catch it cleanly. Kadari Richmond to bring it up. Richmond with 10. Alamir Dawes with 12. And Drake Davis with 11. 
Three Pirates in double figures. That pass forced by Davis. Back-to-back -back drives. The Bulldogs bottled up Richmond and Davis trying to get middle dribble penetration downhill. Three for the wing, and that continues the story this evening for Butler from deep. Ninth of the Knights, and it's down to two. Bulldogs have not led tonight. E.J. Davis with his second tray to draw them within a deuce. Olivier Dawes way off looking to answer. Rebound for Brooks. All the way up ahead. Nobody kept their eyes on Jalen Thomas, but he stepped on the end line. Deep catch, and he just couldn't gather. But you have to respect the way the Bulldogs came out of the locker room here for the start of the second half. You know that the Pirates talked about defending the three ball and chasing them off the line and forcing tough twos. They scorch one early from three, and now their bigs are outrunning the Pirates down the floor. Richmond drawing a double. Richmond gets out of it. Crossover from Dawes, flashing through the lane. Pretty floater. That's another dimension. And that's another tool he's in his toolbox because you have to attach yourself outside the arc because he's a shooter, and then he's crafty when he gets into that mid-range game. It's straight in double figures for Dawes. A nice floater. Well, Alexander's had a tough night, hasn't he? Over number five. Oh. Wow, Davis couldn't get it to drop. Somehow he got around his first man and had the wherewithal to reverse it. I don't know how Kadari snuck that one in. Yeah, DJ Davis, a ambitious three from deep. Dawes kept the hand, spot up three. And that's short. And all of a sudden, both teams are chucking it. Yeah. It's a big difference between shooting one off dribble penetration and out of the flow of the offense and then just stand still threes to where nobody's ready offensively. That's a blocking foul called with Telford yeah, I, trying to back down Dawes. I don't know how we missed that. Stick it in. Telford was aggressive on this one. ISO post situation. Hmm. From up top at our angle, it was actually a little bit tougher. Nice finish for Davis at the rim. Back down to two. And Butler has a different look in their eyes than they did the first part of the first half right now. Well, Davis tried to thread the needle to a cutting Richmond. And it's a turnover on the Pirates. All of a sudden, they have six. Second of the half. Brooks locates Thomas, the low block, and then it's thrown away. And off a deflection. That mod is still clapping, still encouraging. <laughs> Shaheen Holloway was signaling to his guys like listen, I know it's our possession, yeah. but Sprint down yeah, exactly. to pick it up. We can <laughs> score on the break. Yeah, no and Butler with four turnovers is half Mediaco doesn't like to shoot it from there Dawes the pull up short loose ball and a shot clock violation Ale Wusu tried to pick it up and a good recovery on that possession defensively for Butler yeah Butler's come out with a different level of defensive intensity you could hear it with their communication Thad Mata got those guys locked in at the halftime break in that department second halves have been a problem for Butler especially shooting the ball Davis, oh, he tried to go up against Trey Davis, lost the handle, and Dawes takes it goes to the coach. They needed an easy one. You, you got the sense they, they're just repeatedly walking it up and going against the set defense. When they, when they get to a standstill, it's problems. Telford, guarded by Adewusu. 
Brooks from the corner, bounce pass knocked away. Boy, Benny Ako has just been a beast tonight in the low block. Five on the timer for Butler when we come back. This year on college hoops, when you look at the lines, the tickets, the the commotion of her just entering a building, let alone playing the game, well, we will be talking about this for years to come. So five on the shot clock as the Bulldogs inbound. Whoa, look out. DJ Ooh. Davis nearly knocked that one down from Piscataway. Richmond, pull up jumper. That's off the front of the rim. Rebound by Yako, trying to get it back to Richmond, and a foul is called against Brooks on the reach. 23 of their 34 field goal attempts for the Bulldogs have been from downtown. You don't often see that on the road, but that's what got them back into this basketball game when they were throwing the ball all over the arena Here's to a start. Here's a question for you. Do you think that's sustainable? Like, well, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly where I was going. Or do you think that'll even get them the lead in this game? Because they still haven't led Richmond from deep. Talk about a big one. I woke up this crowd a little bit as well. One of three pirates in double figures. Dog just took a shot on that back screen by Thomas. And they're going to call a foul here against Richmond. This is a simple ball reversal. And you really haven't seen many just like this to where he just pulled. Didn't run off anything. It's basically faced up and looked like he's going to go into Kadari exploring mode and just rose up. Six to shoot. DJ Davis feeding the middle. Thomas off the mark. Rebound. Finds his way to Davis. Kick out Brooks. Short from three. Third chance for the Bulldogs. And a foul underneath. Now this is an undersized Butler team. It's been an issue all year. But if they can grab some boards and second chance points, they'll go a long way. Yeah, and Big East fans will remember this about Posh Alexander from his St. John's days. He's not afraid to get in there and muscle around with the bigs. And believe it or not, this is their first free throw attempt of the game. As a team. But it's been a perimeter-based offense for them. Yep. As a team, they shoot 79% from the strike. Seventh best in the country. Alexander 78%. That's them both down. Physical game, but not a lot of fouls have been called. So I'd like to see more post-up action yeah. like that. And that's what Villanova, and I wouldn't be surprised if you saw it from Kadari either. That's what Villanova did to him on Tuesday evening. A lot of ISO posts and not just with Dixon. Telford puts it on the deck through the double. Telford mm. finishing through the contact. And that's one of his bread and butter moves right there. Righty and then putting on the break short with that touch along the baseline. He is their glue guy. It's like a runner and a jump hook combined. Four points so far for Telford. A foul before the shot here. What did I call this on? So it looked like a high elbow there for Dre Davis as he tried to turn the corner, but they'll call it on Brooks. His second. Let's say. You know, you make a few. It's easy to start just relying on the three ball. That was scripted that time from the sidelines by Shaheen Holloway to go inside. Alexander with the steal out of the inbound. He read that perfectly. Alexander around Richmond, wandering into the paint. Telford 
Guarded by Dre Davis. Trying to turn the corner. Can't get the roll. Davis and Telford jog into the backcourt. Dawes for the corner. Yes! Alamir Dawes! 19 points to lead the Pirates. Don't take more sequences like that. Up tempo offense and unselfishness with the rock. Davis looking to answer, and he does. Shane <laughs> Holloway just had both arms wrapped around his head. He could read that body language. How many three point field goals are we going to give up this evening? Oh, well, they've already given up 10. And Butler hanging around. Down by five. Adewuzu peeks at the shot clock. Crossover dribble. Adewuzu. Fade away. No. Rebound Benny Anko. And it rolls off the rim. Mm. Looking for the and one. Well, we've seen a lot of three-point field goal action in the half court. Defending without fouling. Second chance opportunities. All the stuff we talked about early in the first half will go out the window. Bediaco with the stripe here. Brad transfer from Santa Clara. Bounces home the first. These are two teams that if it comes down to free throws late, they both hit their free throws on the regular. That's a nice luxury to have. And I think that ties into both clubs being so old, having yep. so many veterans and experience. Not being afraid of this stage. Well, they're one of the most experienced teams in the league. And Seton Hall adding some experience through the quarter. Oh, that's a yep, late foul call. Coleman with the contact on Landon Moore. And so Butler didn't have a free throw attempt in the first half. Got a couple more here. See, I don't think Coleman needed to do this. I think he had more into a speed dribble, ready to take a contested mid-range shot. I think he had done his job initially. And if not that, then funneling towards Betty Ock. Right. You know your X's and O's. <laughs> well beyond your expert hockey knowledge. <laughs> I was going to say 15. Uh, I've seen him work a couple of times. <laughs> In the, in the <laughs> low block, both tonight and over the course of the last couple of years. On film, at least. Four-point game. Richmond on the blow Ooh. by Wall. Away from the play, Moore got knocked down. Counted, and the foul. It was a five on four. But I think they're going to check here to make sure that more first of all is okay but also whether a flagrant oh, a shot. should be called he took Holloway's a shot trying to point out all of the blood that's on the floor he took a shot right there Andre screen meanwhile hit Richmond you just mentioned we're in a hockey building but how quick was that first step yep. not to be insensitive about the injury but that is a snapshot of what makes Kadari Richmond so difficult to defend against because he looked like he was going to lull you to sleep and you know look at what he's got going and then boom that first step hits you and before you can blink he's at the front of the cup I cannot tell you how many times we heard about for Richmond can he be a guy to carry the team consistently. One more look. It looked like Colin was kind of swimming there, huh? Yeah, so the we obviously have a, a, a basket that's good, an N1 situation coming back with one free throw, but the officials just let us know that that injury right there is what they're looking at to see if they got any extracurricular action here I want to know just 
from a uh, semantics perspective, I guess, just because of timing. The and one for Richmond happened after the injury. Do you count the basket in the continuation? They are. And yep. they just add the, uh, the flagrant after. They would just add the flagrant after. See, I think it looks like he's he's, he's cutting through. Right. Almost like a almost like a swim stroke, trying yeah. to cut through and get over top of that screen. I don't think it was a vicious elbow per se, to where he's trying to you know give him a shot to the nose. Evan Moore transferred in from St. Francis, PA, from the Northeast Conference. Looks like he's been. Uh, well, he's no longer leaking over on the uh, Butler <laughs> bench. And now all we have to sort out is whether it's going to be a flagrant. Could be an important swing here with additional free throws and the foul for Coleman. He has one. And Seton Hall this half with four. If it is another foul that's called after the fact here, leave them with only one more to give. Take one look at it. What would you call? I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't call anything. Uh, Vicious right there. We're gonna find out. Brent Hampton's coming over to our table to get an explanation. Come over to get around the screen. So Brent Hampton agrees. No intent. Basketball play, swinging his arm over to fight through the screen. And that's what it did look like. Have we ever seen Shaheen Holloway happy with anything? <laughs> well, I thought he was laughing a lot when we were chatting with him. When I, he was. I like poking fun that he's not an avid coffee drinker. Oh, like, yeah. That was you good and I. He's a big tea guy. He loves the, uh, what was it, the medicine ball? Medicine ball tea. Neither of us uh, took the plunge on that. Picture. No, no. I did write it down for future reference. <laughs> Maybe the week of the Big East tournament. There you go. So the and one converted seven point lead for Seton Hall. They won four of five as they sit near the tournament bubble. Looking for their fourth winning streak of three or more games this year. Bizjack, but the seas parted and the follow dunk for screen. Butler within five. That's one of the advantages of having your big set that downhill screen up high because you you lose track of those. Locomotive trains coming down the middle of the floor for offensive rebounding opportunities. Richmond pull up off the mark. Telford the rebound. But box out by screen yep. against Bediaco. Brooks lines it up and knocks it down. Big shot for Butler to get it back to two. Cannot give him that much daylight. Got to make him take tough twos. Half of his shot attempts this season are from three-point land. 11th tray for the Bulldogs tonight. Davis trying to keep his pivot foot underneath. Bediaco again boxed out underneath by screen. They've done a good job on him recently. Telford downhill draws the foul. No Second chance points, hustle points, and you got to know where he is. 40% from downtown. And been struggling the last couple, just 27% from three over his last five games coming in. Butler, a chance to take their first lead of the night. Telford is short from way downtown. Richmond, entry pass, Davis, what a pretty catch and finish. Marshall Dean Holloway calls him 
Mr. Consistency, the guy who he relies on the most. And that bucket by his veteran just got this Prudential Center crowd hooking. Telford out of the double. Bizjack off the shot fake. Brooks. Mm. Oh, I got his man up in the air. It was Richmond. And a push off underneath with Telford looking for the loose ball. This will go back to Seton Hall. Third foul for Telford. Long shots equal long rebounds. What a spinoff and a great job by Davis. Keeping Brooks on the top side. And as always, Kadari delivering right on cue. You mentioned Dawes hits the heel of the rim, but Ray Davis at Gene Holloway feels the conference has not given him enough recognition for what he does. The spin move and the finish! Gorgeous play from Dre Davis. Davis had screen in a face-up situation. Knew he was quicker. A gorgeous spin. 57-51. Brooks backs it out. DJ Davis a heave. And look out here with the Pirates in transition. Richmond uh, was thinking of entering it to Dre Davis on the bumping into DJ Davis in the restricted area. There's a smaller DJ Davis with the size disadvantage. Look at this. Oh. Right to left. Screen trying to move his feet. That's just too quick. Too pretty. Third foul for DJ Davis. That bounce off the foot of Pasha Alexander. Butler comes up with the takeaway. Telford threw it away. Coleman has his pocket picked. And oh. Davis collides with Benny Ocho. Hard shoulder. It looks like DJ's going to be fine. That could have been rougher for both parties. I mean, they were moving out of speed to where if that was a few inches either way, they might have knocked each other out. Oh. Into the game for the both gonna be okay, it looks like. Both teams in the bonus from here on out. With just over eight minutes to play. Oh, wow. Quick trigger on the foul, and that's gonna send Butler to the line for a one and one. Third foul for Trey Davis. And that changes the equation here for seeing the Hall's leading scorer tonight. The art of playing great defense is can you body up? Can you lock and trail? Can you be physical and take away daylight without foul? And he had two hands on him. A night where a lot has been uncalled. But I got to tell you, they've let a lot go with body physicality, but they have been a little picky on the hands. I mean, guys are getting cross-checked, well, you know, like you're doing one of your <laughs> hockey games. But, you, man. <laughs> but the hands, they're not taking and more at the strike. Well, I guess the roll. 57 53, under eight to play. This is when you want the ball in Kadari Richmond's hands. Travel. Travel is who has a sloppy hesitation. Yep. Now the drama's going to come down the to the little things. Dawes, Davis. Is there somebody else to step up behind him? Will that have to be the case? Will foul trouble play a factor at all? We shall see. Yeah, I think with all the long rebounds and the three-point shot, Alex, I, I, I think the bigs rebounding and making free throws is going to be key the final five minutes. Alexander's pass tipped. Benioco couldn't grasp it. Second ever for the Bulldogs to save the possession. Brooks the three, short. And it winds up right to the hands of Trey Davis. I think Posh might have missed Thomas underneath. It's been a really rough night for Alexander. 
had the early threes. He has 11 points, but the turnovers are a big issue. Tanari post up. And that's usually good night. He came up short of the jumper. Offensive rebound, Davis. Gonna go right back to work. Trying to cross up Brooks. Loose ball. Butler comes away with it. And here, Brooks knocks down his man. They're gonna call this a defensive foul. A blocking foul on Davis is fourth. And see, that's where the little ticky tack reaching. See, he's along the hip and he's moving with the ball handler. Nine times out of ten, they're going to give that one to the ball handler. That's not the one that kills you. The one that kills you was the one before on the side out of bounds with that reach about 35 feet from the cup. Hand checking one probably has a bit better argument of the two. Brooks can't convert on the front end of the one and one. And what's the word here? Well away from the ball. Looked like a little jostling on the baseline between Benny Aco and Jalen Thomas. Thomas gets tagged with the foul. His second. And seeing a hole in the ball. And he was getting physical in a big time way. I, I, I think all three officials. <laughs> might have just blown their whistles at the same time. They saw that one cooking early. You were right, though. I mean, this, this will likely come down to Bediaco versus everybody else. One for four from the stripe tonight before that, mate. Andre Screen is the only guy who can really match him. In terms of size. What a luxury on your six foot ten center. Shoots nearly 70% from the charity strike. Crowd rising to its feet here in Newark. Six point game. Oh, how to navigate a lot of traffic out high. Alexander shaking big. Couldn't finish with the right. Richmond off the crossover, nearly swatted away. Got oh. it back. Richmond! Unbelievable! Counted in a foul! How did he do that? That is the most emotion I think I've seen Shaheen Holloway show this entire season along the sideline because when you're in moments like this, your top dog's got to come through with big-time plays. And I don't know if there's a play, a highlight, or a sequence that snapshots Kadari Richmond more than that. Wow. Can't convert on a three-point play, but that basket basically brought the house down. Clutch Kadari. Extends the Seton Hall lead. Bad Mata calls timeout. We'll be right back. Pretty much cinched up. I, I think they may have Matt Matt. I'd have to double check on tiebreakers and whatnot with Marquette. But. Well, yeah, and listen, we know you have the top three with UConn, right. Marquette, Green, and we know the Huskies are head and shoulders above anybody else. The Pirates in her position to get into that next fourth slot in the batting lineup. And there's Pediaco once again fourth block two teams on the NCAA tournament boat and for Seton Hall just trying to lock their spot up if they can win a couple more games down the stretch mention some of those heavy hitters coming up including UConn and Marquette that'll cinch up a tournament bid for Butler it might hinge on a game like tonight Richmond again a take rolls off the rim Jalen Thomas the rebound we knew Shaheen was going to have the basketball in his hands. This is danger time. Butler's in a drought. Hasn't scored in four and a half minutes. Missed their last five. You're going to go into this last four-minute media timeout. Is it going to be a two-possession game or a double-digit lead for the Pirates? This is what determines it. Thomas off the hesitation. Lost the handle. On the break, it's Dawes. Pull up three. No. Alamir Dawes leading the way for the Pirates tonight with 19. Richmond not far behind with 18. Oh, 
Iaco coming out to meet Moore. Three from the corner. They left Brooks unmarked and he couldn't get the roll. Look for them to slow it down right now and use the clock. Shaheen Holloway just gave dogs a look before going, what are, what are we doing? Is it the first two minutes of the game? We don't need a three in transition right now. This is Kadari time. time. Yep. And he's on time and on target to Betty Ako who draws a foul. You and I were thinking the exact same thing. This is Kadari yeah. time. I mean, it was the exact same moment. <laughs> it wasn't even pre-rehearsed. <laughs> but what a difference, right? You know, for so long they've been wondering, okay, is this the moment where he's going to take over the game? Is this the moment? And it seems like now, time after time, they can count on him in mm -hmm. clutch moments to carry the team. One on one here for Betty Ako. <laughs> Largest lead of the half for Seton Hall. And for Butler, they need to figure out something and quick. Otherwise, this is going to slip away. How about the trust of Bizjack yep. that Thad Mata has putting his freshman in a moment like this to where they really need to make shots. They're open their last seven. Crunch time here. Thomas nearly threw it away. And a foul is called here with Moore trying to cross to his right. Richmond got a hand on it. Third foul for Richmond. I think Kadari just admitted to his teammates. I might have reached him. <laughs> Still a one and one here. And Landon Moore, 76% foul shooter. It's been an up and down campaign for these Butler Bulldogs. Began conference play two and five. They rallied back to a four game win streak. They've lost four or five coming in in a season that. Showed so much promise in a year that's really been a gauntlet. They have one of the toughest schedules in the country. But will it all be for naught in the end if they can't pick up some wins down the stretch? 63-55. They will do in. No hurry as we cross inside of four minutes to play. What a pass to cut to him. Ade Uzu lays it in. Two high basketball IQs. Beautiful cut. And the freshman Coleman delivering. Ten-point lead. And again Moore drawing some contact. Coleman trying to follow him step for step. Picks up his third and will send the Bulldogs to the line when we come back. Along with some clutch shot making. That game at Hinkle. That came down to one possession tied with under a minute to go. Shaheen Bet Holloway put the basketball in Kadari Richmond's hand said everyone get out of the way. And he put it down. Landon Moore at the stripe here. Misses them both. You're not going to do yourself any favors. 0 for 2 from the charity strikes like a turnover. That's an empty possession. Richmond. Slowly running the set for Seton Hall. Richmond behind the back. Draws a bump from Telford. Fourth foul. Well, the Montreal native. And Richmond at the line for two. Keep in mind for the Hall, we've been talking a lot about the bubble situation. We're going to have some tough opposition coming up. But taking care of this one at home for the Pirates is key as well. They won five straight early in conference play that really helped them out 
And big wins against UConn and Marquette over that stretch. They've added to their quad one win total. They have five wins against quad one teams, Seton Hall. Including one already against this Butler team. And it could be close to good night. Ade Wu's the step through, drawing the foul. And what's the call here? Wow. We're going to count the basket here, I they're think. Call it. They, I mean, they're going to count it, but they're going to review it. See, this is smart by the officials yes. because it has to be a goal 10 call on the floor to be able to review in reverse. If it's not called a goal 10, you can't even get to this point of the process. The officials are reviewing the last call. Came over and gave us a signal that it was reviewing. It wasn't up on the glass. It, no. was, it, it looked like it was on its way up. Yeah. Right about at its highest point. I mean, we're talking about uh, how important these games are for both of these teams. Seton yeah. Hall's won four or five coming in. And they have a gauntlet in the next couple with Creighton, UConn, Villanova. Uh, they had to pull to finish before the Big East tournament. That Villanova game, boy, that, you know, I talk about a bracket buster. That's basically, for Villanova, that's their that's last Super Bowl. Gasp. Yeah. And, and think of Seton Hall. I mean, they, they lose that triple overtime thriller to Creighton at home. And think of for how long of UConn season, their only two losses, felt like it was a broken record with Seton Hall in Kansas. Yep. They just signal to us it's going to be two shots, no basket, no goal, ten call. Good job by the officials calling it and then reviewing it, and that was the right, that was the right call when you saw that replay. And I'm glad you pointed out too. You'd rather call the goal ten, go to review it, make sure you get it right at this stage of the game. So two shots for Seton Hall, already leading by 12. We're going to put this one to bed. That triple overtime game against Creighton actually sparked a three-game losing streak for Seton Hall. And it looked like their season was about to hit the skids, but they pulled it back together. Favorable schedule. They had DePaul and Georgetown back to back, but you know, wins against teams that are vying for tournament spots in Xavier and St. John's lately. Now looking for one tonight against Butler. Bulldogs without a field goal the last seven and a half minutes. Mm. Second half woes have continued into this game. Well, it doesn't matter if it's a two or a three, but you got to get action quickly. Late in the shot clock. And from the short corner, Jalen Thomas finally ends the drought. Nearly eight minutes. Now for Butler, they need a stop. They're going to use this clock. Well, maybe not. Richmond maybe not. on the drive. <laughs> well, just when you think you have it figured out. Yeah. Well, maybe he's trying to lull him to sleep there. Richmond comes up limping just a little bit. A murmur over the crowd as he grabs his left cap. It's not a good sign at all for Seton Hall with Richmond down, getting assistance from the athletic trainer. Place that quiet. Oh, right Davis! Up. Beautiful inbound play. And it's an and one for Trey Davis. And basically just out muscled the freshman, Bizjak, and just pinned them down. Let's take a look at from that angle if it's the foot and ankle or the it was higher he's holding higher but largest lead of the night here for Seton Hall while Richmond gets attention from the athletic trainer Telford knocks down a three you can see the trainer rubbing his calf yeah so maybe it was a quick cramp situation well, let's speculate obviously that's what the hope would be for Seton Hall no doubt 
When would you extend the game if you're Butler by Fallon? Yeah, I think you gotta you gotta pressure and get some stops too. Because the way Seton Hall shoots free throws. You know, Whoa! Pick your poison. But Eddie Aco just threw it into the first row. And a freebie given to Butler here with a minute 49 to go. What a catch by Hank Delisandro. <laughs> I know some names here in the first row. Yeah. Well, it's hell for one and done trip for the Bulldogs. And you have to think they start fouling here yeah. before long. At least get up in pressure, but it's a lot easier when you can get the ball to go through the basket. Oh, they get a deflection here on Dewusu. Locates Davis. Goes up and scores. And one. And after a broken possession, Davis puts the pieces back together. It makes things easier when you're able to break pressure like this offensively. Heads up job by Dylan Ade Wusu looking over top and not looking towards the sidelines. And if you look at Butler, you know, not the same type of opportunities when you start comparing the schedules. They have St. John's at home at Hinkle coming up at the Paul Xavier at home. Obviously, all winnable games, but this is one of those golden opportunity ones on the road. Telford here. Yeah, that was the criticality tonight for Butler coming in. Squad one opponent yep. based on, okay, yep. it's a road game for you. But second half woes continue for the Bulldogs. And a Seton Hall team. And once again sees their three-star players lead the way. Telford a late steal. I'll feed Bizjack up ahead. Hard contest, and it falls off the rim. Seton Hall up by 12. Gary Richmond still hasn't gotten up, by the way, over by the Seton Hall bench. Finally, he takes a seat on one of those chairs. We've been talking about it all night. The, uh, there you go. There's Richmond. We're talking about it for the Bulldogs all night. Their strength of schedule has kept them afloat in a lot of ways. Wins over Boise State, Texas Tech. They beat Creighton and Marquette earlier this year. Four and ten against quad one opposition. Yeah. And they played Michigan State and Florida Atlantic when they were top 20. Yep. But they've lost their last four games now to quad one opposition. And that's, you know, this time of year you get measured about you know, who are you beating. Right now, Butler's not beating anyone. This is going to be their longest losing streak of the season. That four games. Ade Wusu. Crossing the timing line. Butler not fouling, and they're going to back off. Well, listen, this basketball game started 16-3 to Pirates right out of the gates. The Bulldogs turning it over at an alarming rate. You didn't think it would get back to possibly be a two-point game at one point, but it did. Ade Wusu adds to the total. Seen the hall will improve to 11 and 5 in Big East play. Just a credit Thad Mata's group for their fight here tonight on the road. But credit Seton Hall defensively. This is a very, very good offensive team that they're going to hold into the low 60s. That can't get lost in all of this. This is why Shaheen Holloway's defense gives fits to opposing head coaches in the league. Unless Butler hits one in the final eight seconds, it'll be the third straight game they're held under 65. Seton Hall smothering in the second half to slow down the Bulldogs' three-point shooting. Seton Hall with an important victory on their way to March. 76-64 over Butler. They remain.